Distinguished guests and graduates, please rise and welcome the University Marshal and the Platform Party for your 2024 commencement ceremony. Everyone, please remain standing silently during the presentation of the colors by the University of Maryland Honor Guard and for the National Anthem by Anthony Anderson.
by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the Distinguished guest, please remain standing until the colors retire. Then continue standing and welcome Chaplain Jessica Senesak to deliver today's official invocation. Hello everyone, I'm Jess Senesak, the Baptist Chaplain here at UMD. My main role on campus is to take care of students wanting to learn more about and deepen their faith. But today, my role is to help everyone here, but especially the graduates, to make sure that they don't miss the importance of this moment. So today, I want to do that by focusing in on one word. And that word is the word testudo. It turns out, that this is not just the name of our mascot or the website where you register for classes, but as you may not know, it's an actual word. I started at UMD as a freshman back in 1999 and have spent most of my career here at UMD. But I didn't learn what a testudo was until a few years ago when I was on a retreat with the students in my ministry and one of them stumbled across the word testudo while doing a study on the biblical concept of the shield of faith. So what is a testudo? In ancient times, soldiers would carry very large shields and in order to protect each other, they would group up and position their shields like this and this so that together they formed a formation called a testudo. The testudo formation protected the soldiers, but only if they all worked together. So I bring this up to you today, not only because it seems crucial for you to leave UMD knowing what a testudo is, but also because in the coming days and weeks, as it finally hits you that you have graduated, I want you to think back to who has been a part of your testudo. Maybe it was family, friends, professors, roommates, classmates, or others. But whoever it was, it is important to remember the people that were on this journey with you. And going forward, the reality is that the people in your testudo will change, but those people won't be any less important than the ones you are thinking about right now. In fact, as you move into this scary reality of adulthood, they might be even harder to find, but also even more important. So as you go through this day and reflect in the days ahead, I hope that you not only learn something new today, but that you also use that to reflect well on your time at UMD. I don't want you to miss the importance of this moment. Blessings to you all, and congrats to the class of 2024.
please be seated. Distinguished guests, please welcome the president of the University of Maryland, Dr. Daryl J. Pines. Hello, Terps! Thank you, Chaplain Sesenak, for that incredible, incredible benediction. I've learned another thing about Testudo, thanks to you. How about that? How about a round of applause for Chancellor Sesenak? <laughs> Students, families, faculty, staff, and alums, Welcome to the University of Maryland 2024 Commencement Ceremony. This is an extraordinary day for so many reasons. First, it is special because today we host the Class of 2024. How about a round of applause for the Class of 2024? And we also welcome back summer and winter graduates from the class of 2023. Class of 2023, please stand. Class of 2023, please stand. All right, welcome back. Great to see you. You look great. Thanks for coming back. To our graduates, I and the entire university administration are tremendously proud and grateful for the hard work, determination, and excellence you have shown over the course of your years here at College Park. Your generation of students has faced exceptional challenges and had to miss, delay, or significantly alter many milestones and celebrations, including your high school graduation. Because of the pandemic, of course, we are so proud of how you persevered and thankful that we can gather today to honor you. We are stronger. Yes. We are stronger. And I say Terrapin Strong because of you. Now I want to take a moment to acknowledge the School of Public Health. Could all of the School of Public Health graduates stand up? Stand up. Could the Dean of the School of Public Health stand up, Boris Lushniak? As you all may have heard, we had a power outage earlier today in Xfinity and we had to postpone the School of Public Health's college ceremony that was supposed to be held at 3 o'clock or 3.30 today. I want to sincerely apologize to the School of Public Health and to all of the families for this unfortunate circumstance, but I also want to acknowledge the, public health, the School of Public Health and your patience, and we're going to do it again tomorrow, folks, so go Terps! For your flexibility and for your resilience, let's hear another round of applause for the School of Public Health. Now, I would also like to address the families of our graduates for just a moment. As graduating from college is very much a family affair. So please, Family members, for all of our graduates, please stand. Please stand, family members, mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, please stand. We congratulate you as well. Without your commitment, they would not be here. And your commitment to a higher education and its role in leading to a better life for your children has led to this moment. So stand and allow us to recognize you and your own personal journey. Another round of applause for the family members out there. Before we begin today's ceremony, I would like to thank our commencement speaker, 
and Governor of the great state of Maryland, Wes Moore. Wes Moore is a great friend to the University of Maryland and the University System of Maryland, and he is a champion of higher education. I will also acknowledge that his wife, Dawn Moore, is a graduate. She's a turf. Had a round of applause for First Lady Dawn Moore. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the leadership of the university. I ask that each of these groups stand and remain standing. Please hold your applause until the end. First, the vice presidents of the university, please stand. Please hold your applause. <laughs> thank you. The deans of the colleges and schools, please stand. The presidents of the Student Government Association and the Graduate Student Government Association, please stand. The chair of the 2023-2024 University Senate, Dr. Christopher Jarzinski, please stand. Captain John Howry, representing the ROTC. Our faculty and student marshals, please stand. Our student speaker, Talup Wabe Ajehi, please stand. The chair of our Board of Trustees, Craig Thompson, please stand. And University System of Maryland Chancellor Jay Perman, Board of Regents Chair Linda Gooden, and Regent, student regent Josiah Parker from Salisbury University. Give them all a round of applause. I would like to thank each of you for your contributions and making the University of Maryland experience so special for every member of our community. How about another round of applause for all of them? Thank you. Please welcome to the podium Jay Perman, Chancellor, University System of Maryland. Good evening, everyone. It's a great privilege of my job to be able to stand here today alongside Governor Moore, Chair Gooden, Regent Parker, President Pines, and the Distinguished Platform Party. But it's an even greater privilege to be able to address the extraordinary summer and fall 2023 and spring 2024 graduates. Some of you are known as the COVID class, including those of you who came straight from high school. The class that graduated into a pandemic, Miss Prom, as the president said, Miss Graduation and Beach Week started college literally from your childhood bedroom. The class that was looking for their future and was handed uncertainty instead. And you know what? If I had to bet on any class to do great things, important things, impossible things, I'd bet on the class of 2024. Because you know what the world looks like when it's turned upside down. And I suspect you know better than most how to turn it right again. I suspect you have the talent and the skill to confront the greatest challenges of our age, the problems that threaten our humanity, our society, our world. I suspect you have as well the empathy, the compassion, and yes, the fearlessness to do great and daring things that need doing. The grit and the grace you showed 
when the world was roiling, you will show again. Because as I'm sure you've noticed, the world is regrettably always roiling. And so we're counting on you because you will solve what we couldn't. You will value what we didn't. And you will shine brighter than any darkness can touch. Congratulations to the one and only University of Maryland class of 2024. Please welcome to the podium, Linda Gooden, Chair, University System of Maryland Board of Regents. Distinguished guests, family, friends, and most of all, members of the University of Maryland Summer and Fall 23 and Spring 2024 graduates, I am delighted to be here to offer congratulations from the Board of Regents. I am incredibly proud to share this occasion with our keynote speaker, Governor Wes Moore, an extraordinary leader for Maryland and a true friend of higher education. I also want to acknowledge the USM Chancellor, Jay Perman, who continues to provide incredible leadership to the entire university system of Maryland. We are truly fortunate to have him. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to the University of Maryland President, Darrell Pines, who has proven himself to be a dynamic, visionary leader for UMD. My thanks go out as well to the outstanding administration, faculty, and staff here at UMD. I know how much you contribute to this institution's excellence and impact. And it is a great source of pride for all of us to know that by any measure, whether it's national rankings, research partnerships, public service, faculty accomplishments, or student achievements, UMD stands as one of the finest universities in the world. The, the University System of Maryland is very proud of UMD, but it is your accomplishment that we celebrate today. Today, you become part of an enduring and impressive legacy. The knowledge and experience that you've received here, that you've earned here, are yours forever. The resilience, adaptability, and tenacity you have demonstrated will serve you well throughout your careers and your lives. I also want to note that the principles of service and doing good run deep within the UMD community and I hope you will continue to honor that tradition. So on behalf of the Board of Regents and the entire university system of Maryland, I offer each of you a well-deserved congratulations. Go Terps! Please welcome to the podium, Josiah Parker, Student Regent, University System of Maryland Board of Regents. Good evening, distinguished guests and members of the graduating class. As a member of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents and as a fellow student within our esteemed system, it brings me great joy to stand before you today and extend my heartfelt congratulations on this remarkable occasion. It is truly an honor to be in the company of Governor Westmore, Chancellor Perman, Chair Gooden, President Pines, and UMD's amazing leadership team, outstanding faculty, and dedicated staff. Their unwavering commitment has been instrumental in guiding and supporting each of you on your journey towards success. As a fellow USM student, I know firsthand the trials and triumphs that have paved the way to this significant milestone. 
I acknowledge the invaluable support of your loved ones, both present here today and those here in spirit who have stood by your side, sharing in your sacrifices and celebrating your victories. Now your path to this moment has undoubtedly been filled with challenges, yet I trust it has also been abundantly rewarding. As you embark on the next chapter of your life, I encourage you to keep the University of Maryland close to your heart, a place where you found knowledge, growth, and most importantly, friendship. May you remain connected with one another and continue to contribute to your communities with the same passion and dedication that has brought you to this day. Once again, I extend my warmest congratulations to each of you, and I offer my sincerest wishes for a future filled with balanced opportunities and success. Congratulations, class of 2024. Please welcome to the podium, Lori Diarmon, President, University of Maryland Alumni Association Board of Governors. Have you asked yourself, who do I want to be tomorrow when I wake up as an alum? You walk through the doors of this stadium as students. When you leave, you begin the next phase of your journey as alumni. It is my privilege to welcome you to this extraordinary network, a network of over 400,000 who are making a significant impact in the world. Throughout your time at UMD, you've transformed in ways both big and small. Your experiences have shaped you into the remarkable person you are today. As you continue life's journey, remember this. You define your self-worth. Do not, do not allow others to dictate who you are or what you are capable of achieving. Whether you go on to solve grand challenges in notable ways or more quietly in your everyday interactions, do so with the knowledge that your Terp family is here for you. Thank you to the over 1,000 students who have helped reinvigorate the senior class gift tradition and are wearing a special alumni charm on your caps this evening. You are already giving back to support Terps through the Keep Me Maryland Fund. Since graduating from the Robert H. Smith School, I have been fortunate I have been fortunate to work with fellow Terps and enjoy lifelong friendships. That's why I joined the Alumni Association and I encourage you to do the same. It's a lifelong connection to this institution that's helped shape who you are now and into the future. As the door opens onto the next phase of your journey, reflect on the question I asked earlier. Who do you want to be tomorrow? Let that answer guide you as you forge your own path, knowing that the University of Maryland and your fellow alumni will be supporting you every step of the way. On behalf of the Alumni Association, well done, graduates. Welcome back, Dr. Daryl J. Pines. I would like to now introduce the remarkable candidates for the University Medal, the highest honor that we can bestow upon any graduate. It is awarded each year to the senior who best personifies academic distinction, extraordinary character, and outstanding contributions beyond his or her major field of study. The University Medal Selection Advisory Committee identified four finalists from all of this year's graduates. And it is my honor and privilege to introduce you to them now. Yusei Pham. Yusei Pham is a mechanical engineering major who has already worked on a spacecraft 
that will blast off to resupply the International Space Station. He earned a 4.0 GPA, was a member of the Clark Scholars and College Park Scholars programs, and will pursue mechatronics systems research in graduate school. <laughs> where he hopes to continue leveraging engineering for discovery and societal advancement. Let's give another round of applause to Yufei Fong. Next up, Gcom Jeju Fomenji spent her time at Maryland uplifting those in marginalized communities and aims to continue by becoming a pediatric neurosurgeon. A Banneker Key Scholar majoring in neuroscience, she earned a four-point GPA as a member of the Gemstone Program in the Honors College. And she worked as a medical assistant at a local pediatric urgent care center. How do I run the round of applause for her? Congratulations. Next up, Kintera Wood. Kintera Wood majored in psychology and is planning to become a counseling psychologist. She had an internship with the Public Defender Service for the District of Columbia and volunteered with Court Watch Montgomery and the Children's Playtime Project, supporting children experiencing homelessness or domestic violence. She also co-authored a presentation for the American Psychology Association and is working in the Restoring Hope Research Lab to investigate and improve outcomes for formerly incarcerated black men. Give her a round of applause. Next up, Jack Yang. Jack is a biochemistry and economics double major and a Banneker Key Scholarship recipient. An aspiring physician, he is the co-director of Kensum, which supports children who have a parent with cancer and won the 2023 Do Good Challenge. He also conducted research at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health. Please join me in congratulating Jack and all of the other four finalists. And now, I am pleased to introduce to you this year's University Medalist. Inspired by the hardship her grandfather faced in building a life in the United States after fleeing Peru in the 1990s, this student will be going to law school with a dream of providing free and affordable representation for immigrants. She is a criminology and criminal justice and psychology double major who earned a 4.0 GPA and interned at the Virginia Indigent Defense Commission, the Harvard Immigration and Refugee Clinical Program, and an immigration law firm in Houston, Texas. She also helped found the student group Latina Pathways, now a registered not-for-profit that donates classroom supplies to high school for English as a second language classes and created a scholarship for undocumented Terps. Distinguished guests, please join me in honoring this year's university medalist, Camila Valerie A. Solomon Sia.
Congratulations, Camila. Well done. Give her another round of applause. Camila, let's say hi to her, pair, okay, her family over there, up there in the high seats. See them up there waving? Give them a round of applause. Congratulations. You should be proud. Well done. How about another round of applause for Camila and the four finalists? Great job, guys. Well done. Well done. At each commencement, we ask a student to address the graduating class selected by a committee of faculty and staff under the direction of the provost. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Talula Pe Ajehi. Give her a round of applause. Talula Pe is a graduating today with a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism and minors in law and society and Spanish. She is also a Banneker Key Scholar and a member of University Honors Program. She worked for university publications, including The Black Explosion, The Diamondback, and Capital News Service, as well as interning for WJLA-TV and NBC News. Yes, she's amazing. She has been honored by Chesapeake AP Broadcasters Association and the Hearst Journalism Awards Program and will work as a reporter and anchor for a local station in Tucson, Arizona. Please join me in welcoming your 2024 student commencement speaker, Talalupe Ajehi. I may have majored in journalism, but today I want to give you the final math lesson of your college careers. Don't worry, I promise it will be easy. Let's start with subtraction. The process of taking something from another. First introduced to us in an elementary school class, but we probably didn't fully understand it until the year 2020. For most of us, that was the year we graduated high school, but it was nothing like we pictured. Our college experience was derailed before it even began by a once in a lifetime pandemic. We lost proms, graduations, sports seasons, and long-awaited opportunities. But for some of us, the tolls were even more profound. The loss of people we love, all to a disease many of us never predicted. Division. The action of separating something into parts or the process of being separated. A concept this class is no stranger to. When we finally arrived in College Park, we faced isolation, unlike anything our hyper-connected, chronically online generation had ever experienced. We moved into dorms without roommates, attended classes through laptop screens, and ate our meals in solitude. At a time when we should have been bonding, we were forced apart. Our screens exposed us to a world fraught with political polarization, racial injustice, and international conflict. We were separated when we needed community most. Yet, in that darkness, glimmers of light emerged through addition. 
the action or process of adding something to something else. As we learned about conflict and injustice, we added new perspectives, gaining empathy for those whose struggles were different from our own. When we were exposed to clashing worldviews, we added wisdom, learning from the mistakes of those who came before us, helping to ensure that history is not repeated. And most importantly, we added to our resilience, digging deeper than we thought possible to earn the degrees we celebrate here today. Along the way, we underwent multiplication, the process of exponentially increasing and becoming greater. Our growth was compounded through shared experiences that increased our appreciation for human connection. Slowly, we formed the communities that made our burdens lighter. Strangers became friends, study partners, and chosen family, bonded by shared goals and shared struggles. We finally had the opportunity to sit in lecture halls less than six feet apart, to share meals and living spaces with roommates. Hopefully, you were one of the lucky ones who had AC. And we were able to stand under the Maryland flag in the student section during halftime, a feeling that I could only compare to the joy of being in kindergarten again, playing parachute under a billowing piece of rainbow cloth. So now, we move forward, bracing for the world's inevitable curveballs, but confident that we have the right equation to be prepared. The sum of our experiences has shaped us into passionate leaders and lifelong learners who won't only adapt to changing circumstances, but will drive positive change ourselves. In every reality we enter, we must intentionally multiply our impact to make the world more sustainable more just, and more awake to our shared humanity. Class of 2024, we have conquered subtraction by persisting, conquered division by listening, conquered isolation through addition and multiplication. Our presence here today is living proof that we are not just a product of our circumstances, but active participants determined to make a difference. Congratulations, fellow graduates. Let's go show the world just how far our solutions can take us. Thank you. So I have a little secret to reveal. I'm going off script. Sorry, voice of God, people. Um, Talalupe told us when we were in the green room in the back that first she got an email from Provost Rice, and she thought she was in trouble when it was announcing her to be the student speaker. That's number one. But here's the greatest surprise that she's given her parents. She did not tell her parents that she was the student speaker for today's commencement exercises so if Talalupe's parents, where are you in the audience? Stand up, your whole family. There they are. They did not know that their daughter was today's commencement speaker. Congratulations to you. Well done. Thank you. <laughs>
Please welcome to the stage the president of the University of Maryland Student Government Association, Alexandra DeBus. Good evening. My name is Alexandra DeBus, and I had the honor of serving as the student body president during this academic year, representing all of our 30,000 undergraduate students. I want to congratulate and extend my best wishes to all of you as you celebrate this fantastic achievement and begin to take the next step in your lives. It is also my privilege to introduce tonight's commencement speaker, Governor Wes Moore. Governor Moore, Governor Moore is Maryland's first black governor in the state's 246 year history and just the third African American elected governor in the history of the United States. Moore's life and career have been defined by service. Before entering elected office, he was the CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation, built and ran a small business that helped underserved students navigate college, and led soldiers in combat in Afghanistan as a captain in the U.S. Army. In 2010, Moore wrote The Other Wes Moore, a story about the fragile nature of opportunity in America, which became a perennial New York Times bestseller. Moore is a graduate of Valley Forge Military Academy and College, Johns Hopkins University, and Wolfson's College, Oxford, where he studied as a Rhodes Scholar. Please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Governor Wes Moore. What's going on, College Park? How y'all doing? Alexandra, thank you so much for not just your uh, wonderful introduction, but also for your leadership. It means the world to us, sincerely. And, uh, and I cannot tell you enough how excited I am to be here. Uh, to my dear friend, President Pines, thank you so much for the leadership and for this, for this incredibly kind, kind invitation to be here. It means the world to me. And to my friends, Chair Perman, to Chair Gooden, to President Diarmon, to my guy, Chair Craig Thompson, to distinguished members of the Platform Party, to all the faculty and the friends and the family and the special guests, but most importantly, all you beautiful Terps who are graduating today. I, um, and can we please give it up for the summer 2023, winter 23, the great UMD College Park class of 2024. Congratulations, y'all. Now, I am, uh, I'm thrilled to be here, not just because you all are the flagship, but also, as President Pines mentioned, I'm married up. Because <laughs> I'm married a Terp. And, uh, and so, uh, since y'all have been kind enough to welcome me here, and since I did marry a Terp, I guess y'all are my in-laws. So, um, so it's good to be here, but, but I gotta tell you, my, uh, my amazing wife and our state's amazing First Lady Dawn, she, um, she reminds me of something often. Yeah, I'm gonna give her a round of applause too because she's bad. But she always does remind me of something that, um, that I think about. And I was thinking about as I was preparing to come here today because she always says that without the University of Maryland, I would have never learned how beautiful Maryland actually is. Because she's not from here. She was born and raised in New York City. <laughs> this really is like New York South, I, I get cracked up on. But she was born and raised in New York City and the truth is that she never really saw herself living here. She never saw herself leaving New York. But then she got a scholarship to this school, and she fell in love with this state. And she has lived and worked in Maryland now for her entire adult life. And that's the power of the University of Maryland. The power of this place is that you don't just educate Marylanders, you create Marylanders. 
And I could not be more proud to be the governor of a state that produces extraordinarily Marylanders like the way the University of Maryland College Park does every single year. Now, now to all the graduates, I know y'all are about to write the next chapter of your lives. And for each and every one of you, you're gonna have different stories, but the one guarantee that I can tell you is this, is that challenges await you. And you won't be able to predict any of them. Many of the trials that you will face, you will never see coming. You will have moments that will define you that you did not anticipate. And the only question that will be presented is, what is going to happen when life decides to throw you a curveball? Because it will. In fact, they're going to throw many at you. And so today, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about preparation. Because I look out in the crowd here, and I see students who have spent years preparing for their next steps. We have graduates from the School of Public Health. Shout out to the School of Public Health. And y'all, you've spent years preparing to save lives. We have graduates from the School of Engineering. Shout out to the School of Engineering. And you all have been preparing to help us explore new frontiers in science and technology. We have people who graduated with international relations degrees like I did. And I know y'all are still trying to figure out what to do next, because I know I was. But the thing I know is this, is that you worked hard for these diplomas. You spent countless hours in McKeldin Library. Shout out to the people who cheer when I say McKeldin Library. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Woo, libraries. <laughs> I know for many of you, you were the first in your family to go to college. I, yes. I know for many of you, you juggled coursework with a campus job. I know for some of you, some of you here don't just have your parents in the stands. That some of you here have your children in the stands as well. And you graduated despite the fact that you were also raising families while you were going and pursuing your degree in higher education. So, so for each and every one of you, you have absolutely earned this moment. But I have news for you. The degree that you receive today will neither be your preparation nor your protection for the challenges ahead. Because true preparation cannot be taught in a classroom. It must be earned through experience. And so as you consider your next steps, I know people are going to tell you that you should focus on this thing or you should focus on that thing. They're going to be tell, tell, people are going to tell you you should choose STEM or you should choose business. <laughs> Y'all have heard that before, huh? Or you should choose communications, or you should choose a whole series of different things. And all those suggestions are very valid. And take them seriously. But oftentimes, they're guided by short-term trend lines and not long-term preparation. So let me throw something else at you today that you should choose. Choose tough. Choose the thing that forces you to wake up early in the morning. Choose the thing that forces you to stay up late at night. Choose the thing that your friends and or your family members might not fully understand. Choose the thing that takes you out of your comfort zone, but doesn't just take you out of your comfort zone. Choose the thing that keeps you out of your comfort zone. Choose tough. Because when you choose tough, that's how you are going to figure out how to handle anything that life throws at you. 
No, I know I had my first opportunity to choose tough when I was 17 years old. And at that point, I decided to join the Army. And I was so young, I was still a minor, I was so young that my mother had to sign the paperwork for me. But my mother, as she will tell you, that because of my teenage years, she would sign whatever paperwork the Army put in front of her. And I'm the son of an immigrant single mom who didn't get her first job that gave her benefits until I was 14 years old. And so when I joined the Army, I did it because I was passionate to do it, but also I did it because college is really expensive. And the military promised to pay to help pay for my tuition. But what I didn't know at that moment was this, is that military service wouldn't just help get me get through college. It would help prepare me for a life of uncertainty. Because I didn't complete my Army training with a degree. I did not complete my Army training where I was scored on a 4.0 scale. For me, the military was what served as a preparation for everything that I was going to see for the rest of my life. Because in each of your own individual ways, however you choose to do it, when you choose tough, there's never anything that you are going to see in your life that is ever going to make you flinch. And I'm talking about the kind of preparation that helped me to run a small business here in Maryland. I'm talking about the preparation that helped me to build my family, my career. I'm talking about the kind of preparation that helped me to become the 63rd governor of this state and the first black governor in the history of the state of Maryland. And I'm talking about the kind of preparation that helped me and helped my team respond when the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. Because there's something I've learned about this job is this. Whenever my phone rings in the middle of the night, I'm never about to get good news. Because good news waits until the morning. And at 2.02 in the morning, when my phone rang, my chief of staff called me to tell me that the Francis Scott Key Bridge was gone. When he told me that we now had a cargo ship that is the length of three football fields, a cargo ship that is the weight of the Washington Monument, that it now collided with one of the most iconic bridges in this state, and now we had that vessel that was stuck in the middle of the Patapsco River with three to 4,000 tons of steel sitting on top of it. The remainder of the bridge at the bottom of the river. And that there were six Marylanders who were unaccounted for, who we later realized and learned had died that night. So our team had to respond to a situation that nobody could have predicted. And we were forced to do something that no one had done before. So when people ask me, what kind of training helped you to respond to the unthinkable when it happened? My answer was not, well, I have a bachelor's in arts in international relations. The answer was that I chose tough. That was my preparation. And as of this morning, and as of this morning, I am proud to say that we have refloated that ship, that we are on track to have a full federal channel cleared within weeks that we have brought the families of the six victims the closure that they deserve and we have achieved things that people said would take months in a matter of weeks. So, so class of 2024, my message to you is this, choose tough because when you choose tough, you become tough. There's nothing that will shake you. 
There was nothing that will make you flinch. When you choose tough, you don't just open up the world, you prepare yourself for the world. Now, I don't mean to say that your education has not prepared you, because it has. But not because you earned a specific degree with a specific title. Your education has prepared you because your education has toughened you and your education has tested you. It's the all-nighters. It's the hard classes. It's the seminar discussions and the long conversations. It's the struggle of balancing coursework and a campus job. It's the hours you spend engaging in the biggest debates that our world is wrestling with right now. It's all of the tough choices that you have made from the moment that you walked onto this campus. And I'm talking about tough choices that people made like your classmate, Marie Brodsky. Because during COVID, Marie witnessed how isolation affected the health and happiness of her grandfather, who suffered a stroke years earlier. So Marie chose tough. She founded a company called Wise Cities. It's a startup to help older Americans deal with isolation. Her project has already received thousands of dollars in grant funding, and it is literally changing lives as we speak. So I say to Marie, thank you for choosing tough. I've learned about people like your classmate, Lou Keys. Lou came to University of Maryland to earn a master's in public health. But getting a degree wasn't challenging enough for Luke because Luke chooses tough. He juggled his studies with his work running a nonprofit organization that he founded himself. It is called True Community. It trains people in CPR. And so far, his nonprofit has certified more than 8,000 people in 20 cities. So I say to Luke, thank you for your work and thank you for choosing tough. And I learned about people like your classmate, Gustavo Lang Jr. Gustavo, I'm hearing some cheering back. Gustavo started his career as an educator. He got married. Yay, marriage. He had two children, and he built a solid foundation for his family. And then Gustavo made a decision. He chose even tougher. He went back to school so he could launch a second career, and at the University of Maryland, he has balanced home life and coursework and a regular job to support him and his family, and today he starts a new chapter as an engineer. Gustavo, thank you for choosing tough. Terps, for each and every one of you, you have everything that you need to make the hard choices the choices that will both protect you and prepare you for life's unpredictable challenges. So my ask of you tonight is simple. Nurture that instinct. Answer that call. And grow it. Choosing tough is running with an idea that you never told anybody about because you were scared to. Choosing tough is saying no to a guaranteed business offer because you know your worth and you know you can do better. Choosing tough is making amends with a family member or a friend who hurt you long ago. But that same person seeks and deserves forgiveness. Choosing tough is staying awake during a graduation even though you're all up all night at Sea Stone. <laughs> Choosing tough 
is pushing yourself to the very limit and then deciding, I <laughs> deciding I still have more to give. Because if you choose tough, I promise you, you will be ready to take on the world. It will not be glamorous. It will not be simple. It will not get you a short-term reward. But if life has taught me anything, it is this. The things that are hard are the things that last. The things that have come easy to me are the things that do not matter. Choose tough. Because those who are willing to push are the ones who are willing to prevail. Class of 24, it's your time. Get out there, choose tough, win big, make us all proud, and always, always, always bleed red. God bless you, Terps. Congratulations. Congratulations on all you do. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean for the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Dr. Craig Bayrudi. Well, good evening, Governor Moore. Thank you for those inspiring words. And I think we're looking at a sea of tough in front of us as well. Will the graduates of the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources please stand or raise your hands to be recognized? They are a small group, but they are a tough group. My name is Craig Beirudi, and I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of the Founding College on this campus, the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Our faculty, staff, and students are focused on eliminating hunger, developing climate smart solutions for a healthy planet, preserving our natural resources, and improving the quality of life here in Maryland and beyond. Each of our students is now on a trajectory to truly make a difference by helping solve some of the world's most immediate and relevant challenges such as environmental sustainability, improving community health and wellness, or overcoming poverty. Our college couldn't be more proud of you. There is no nobler profession than the ones chosen by our graduates. Congratulations to our newest college alums. Please come back and see us whenever your schedule allows, and go Terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean for the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation, Dr. Dawn Jordan. Congratulations, University of Maryland Summer and Fall 2023 and Spring of 24 graduates. I am honored to celebrate you and the hard work that got you here today. Over the next few days, you're going to get a lot of advice from a lot of people whether you want it or not. It's unstoppable, just lean in. I don't want to buck the trend. So here's mine. This was given to me by my mentor at Bradley University, Professor Paul Castle. Before any big performance or presentation, Paul would whisper, dare to fail gloriously. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Take risks. You will win some, and you will learn some. I wish you the best of luck as you move out into the world. Do good things. I know you're going to make us proud. So now I invite all of the graduates of the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation to please rise, wave, shout. Congratulations. Dare to fail gloriously. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities, Dr. Stephanie Shonakon. I 
I'm Stephanie Shanikan, proud dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. Will all the candidates from the College of Arts and Humanities please stand as you are able. Our artists, our artists and humanists remind us of our common humanity and that despite our differences, we all have the capacity to love and empathize. Our Hugh graduates move us by creating and performing works that bring us joy, wonder, and beauty. Shout out to our graduates of music, theater, dance, art, immersive media design, and creative writing. Our arts and humanities graduates also help us think critically and ethically about our diverse stories, our unique histories, how we communicate and connect to other identities, languages, cultures, worldviews, and religions. Shout out to our majors in history, art history, archaeology, communication, English, languages, literatures and cultures, classics, linguistics, American studies, women, gender and sexuality studies, Jewish studies, religious studies, and philosophy. My very dear artists and humanists, we need you now more than ever. You remind us that unlike Barbie, we are humans and we know what we were made for. Congratulations. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences, Dr. Susan Rivera. Hello, my name is Susan Rivera. I am the proud to be the Dean of the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences. We're also known as BSOS. All right, I invite those BSOS graduates to make some noise, stand if you can. President Pines, I present to you a cohort of talented social scientists, data scientists, community leaders, healthcare champions, environmental researchers, social justice advocates, and civic leaders from diverse fields who are united by the desire to be the solution to the world's great challenges. These are graduates from African American and Africana Studies, Anthropology, Criminology and Criminal Justice, Environmental Science and Policy, Economics, Geographical Sciences, Government and Politics, International Relations, Hearing and Speech Science, neuroscience and cognitive science, psychology, social data science, sociology, and survey methodology, BSOS graduates approach complex problems with curiosity, innovation, and a commitment to improving the human condition. BSOS graduates choose tough Governor Moore. President Pines, please confer upon our graduates their well-earned degrees. Congratulations, BSOS Terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the Robert H. Smith School of Business, Dr. Prabhadev Konana. Good evening. Will all candidates from the Robert H. Smith 
School of Business, please stand or wave. <laughs> President Pines, Provost Royce, it is my privilege to present to you this fearless, in the, in the words of Governor Moore, the tough, creative, unstoppable, and extraordinary cohort of future business leaders. They know profits matter for noble purpose, to make lives better for all and create a just society. They bring ideas to the market and create prosperity. They uphold the highest ethical principles along with a profound commitment to social justice and constructive dialogue. They embody the transformative power to shape a brighter tomorrow. They are our future CEOs, entrepreneurs, social reformers, statesmen, and thought leaders, like many of them have come before you in Van Munching Hall. <laughs> Graduates, your success is reflected in our success. We are eager to see your impact in the world before you are seated. Cheer, be loud, and congratulations, and go Terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences, Dr. Amitabh Varshney. Will all the graduates of the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences stand and cheer? <laughs> Governor Moore, President Pines, Provost Rice, standing before you are the scientists, mathematicians, healthcare providers, teachers, entrepreneurs, and innovators who will make a huge impact on our world. They will confront climate change and explore the farthest reaches of the space. They will advance the field of artificial intelligence. They will discover cures and new treatments of diseases. And they will invent technologies like quantum computers that will change the world in ways we can't even begin to imagine. These 2,300 graduates from August, December, and May will tackle the grand challenges of our time and move us fearlessly forward. Congratulations, Science Terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean for the College of Education, Dr. Kimberly Griffin. Good evening, my name is Kimberly Griffin and I am the proud Dean of the College of Education. Ed Terps, I carry the pride of our whole College of Education community with me tonight as I can say congratulations to you all. As future teachers, school leaders, counselors, and researchers, your greatness and potential have no limits. You'll be on the front lines of efforts to meet all students' needs and close equity gaps in learning and developmental outcomes. You will develop and lead initiatives that create safer and more inclusive schools. And you will guide us as we resist existential threats to our planet and our democracy. Your brilliance will change the world and your impact will resonate for generations. We all know that you will truly transform education for good. Ed Terps, will all of the candidates of the College of Education please rise or wave as you are able. Well done, congratulations. Distinguished guests, Please welcome to the stage the Dean of the A. James Clark School of Engineering, Dr. Samuel Graham. Congratulations to our Clark School graduates. I am Samuel Graham and the Dean of the Clark School of Engineering. 
Engineering plays a critical role in creating solutions for society, and our graduates are ready now to make an impact. In the Clark School, we create innovations for the public good. From the latest in space technologies, advanced computing, artificial intelligence, and communications, improving our critical infrastructure, developing advanced medical technologies, and energy systems, our, en our engineers are there leading the way. While we challenge you, our graduates, during your education, you also challenged us. We made each other better. You inspired us. We are proud of you. I now ask that the graduates of the Clark School please rise as you're able. Show your Maryland pride in those awesome Clark School medallions. Go Turks! Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the College of Information Studies, Dr. Keith Marzullo. Hello, my name is Keith Marzullo and I'm the Dean of the College of Information Studies. Info graduates, let's hear some noise. There you are. You're graduating at a time when information is valued like never before. You will shape the future of our society as information professionals, archivists, information consultants, cybersecurity experts, data scientists, information engineers. The list is long. Be fearless, I mean, be tough. You have a vital role to play in promoting the free flow of information while safeguarding individual privacy. You have a responsibility to ensure that information is accessible to all, regardless of physical ability and socioeconomic status. You can apply your knowledge and expertise to promote transparency and accountability. I know we will use information and technology for good. And finally, keep in touch. It's been an honor having you, and we want to follow your career. Faculty, Family, friends, please join me acknowledging the University of Maryland Summer and Fall 2023 and Spring 2024 graduates of the College of Information Studies. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism, Mr. Rafael Lorente. Good evening, Terps. This is my first campus commencement as Dean of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism, the best journalism program in the land. <laughs> journalism faces many challenges, from mis- and disinformation to a lack of trust. Yet journalism remains as important as ever. The job of a good journalist is to find the truth and tell it in the most compelling way possible. That's tough. But that's what democracy needs. That's why Merrill College graduates are le learning, leading the way to a reimagined journalism in service to a vibrant and inclusive democracy. But whether you go on to work as journalists or enter other fields, you will stand out. You are critical thinkers and problem solvers. You bring to bear skills in written, audio, and visual communication, data analysis, computational methods, artificial intelligence, and more. You will make any field you enter better. Would Merrill's graduates please stand or wave your hands as you are able? I am proud of what you've done, but I, even, I am even prouder of the impact you will have in journalism and numerous other professions. Congratulations and go Terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the School of Public Health, Dr. Boris Lushniak. So public health, do we not choose tough governor, president, chancellor, provost? We suffered through a power outage today. 
and we prove our resilience by being here, and we're here to electrify the audience. <laughs> School of Public Health graduates, please stand or wave. A big cheer for our graduates who remind us of the wide impact public health has on the world around us. Today is your day. All your hard work culminates in today's celebration. Be happy today, but also be thankful to those who got you here. Reach out to family, friends, loved ones, mentors, teachers, and thank them for their love and support. Celebrate today. And with this celebration, rededicate yourself to take on the grand challenges of the bold and noble field of public health, to play a role in the complete physical, mental, and social well-being of the global population. We are dedicated to prevent disease and injury, to promote health and well-being with the goal of prolonging a high quality of life for all. The challenges are many, and we expect you to lead us fearlessly forward to strengthen and promote public health and support the resilience of our communities. Believe in yourselves and in your mission. We can change the world. We are public health terps. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Associate Dean of Academic and Student Affairs from the School of Public Policy, Dr. Nina Harris. Good evening. I'm Nina Harris, Associate Dean of the School of Public Policy. I ask that the amazing graduates of the School of Public Policy stand, wave your hands, make some noise, and be recognized. Graduates, you have spent your time here honing your policy and governance skills, broadening your thinking and delving into real world issues. You have not waited until after graduation to make your impact, but have instead already rolled up your sleeves and gotten to work. From organizing to save our democracy, harnessing the tools of science and technology to solve our biggest problems, to innovating bottom up and top down climate action, to advocating for legislation in both Annapolis and Washington DC, to running for office, these students before us have done it all. You graduates put the public and the good in serving the public good. We are so, so proud of you. We salute your success and your service today. Keep justice at the forefront of your decision making. Keep modeling what leadership in the public good looks like. Today, it looks just like you. Go forth and change the world because it's what? It's our policy. Congratulations, Policy Turks. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Associate Provost and Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. William Cohen. Good evening. I'm William Cohen, Dean for Undergraduate Studies. The Office of Undergraduate Studies runs programs that reach every student on this campus. We oversee the Honors College, College Park Scholars, the Academic Achievement Programs, Letters and Sciences, the Incentive Awards Program, and many other offices that extend across the whole university, including the General Education Program, through which all undergraduates take classes in a variety of subject areas. This evening, we recognize those graduates for whom the more than 100 majors offered at this university did not suffice. These fearless students designed their own rigorous interdisciplinary majors in the Individual Studies program. Talk about choosing tough. 
Would the bachelor degree recipients in individual studies majors please rise to be recognized as you are able. Congratulations to all individual studies majors. Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Stephen Roth. Good evening. I'm Stephen Roth, Dean of the Graduate School. Will all masters and doctoral graduates please rise or wave as you are able and be recognized. As one grad terp alum to another, I congratulate you. The Graduate School su provides support for over 10,000 graduate students and 300 graduate programs at the university, including awarding hundreds of fellowships and grants and providing career and professional development support. Whether you began your graduate degree immediately after your bachelor's or took a tougher route, and you spent years or even decades pursuing your advanced degree, you are now part of the thousands of Maryland grad Terps who are leaders in every sector of our society, from industry and academia to government and nonprofits. Our university's reputation and impact are driven by your successes. Congratulations and go grad Terps! Distinguished guests, please welcome to the stage the Dean of the Libraries, Dr. Adrian Lim. Good evening, graduates. My name is Adrian Lim, and I'm Dean of the University Libraries. My library colleagues and I like to say, your purpose is our purpose because we care so deeply about your success. For this reason, it's extremely exciting to be here, to celebrate your hard-won achievements, and to witness a culmination of your years of learning and research, your toughness and resilience at the University of Maryland. My sincere hope is that you have found our six wonderful campus libraries, our extensive resources, archives, and databases, and our many study spaces, services, and cultural events to be of great support to you throughout your journey. As you move into this next chapter of your life, please stay curious, keep reading and learning, and treasure all those exciting discoveries yet to come. Congratulations, go Turks. Distinguished guests, please welcome Captain John Howry. He will administer the oath of office to our newest second lieutenants and ensigns. Tonight we take this important moment to recognize our fellow graduating Terps who will put on the uniform of our nation as officers in our armed forces. They will take the oath that all military officers have taken. They will not take an oath to an individual person. Rather, they take an oath to the Constitution of the United States, an oath to support and defend the Constitution, an oath to be faithful to the Constitution. They will commit themselves to fearlessly leading our armed forces to tackle the grand challenges that lie ahead. They will take all that they have learned here at the University of Maryland fearlessly forward with them to every corner of the world on land, in the air, in outer space, and our vast oceans both on and below the surface. Distinguished guests, at this time I will administer the oath of office to our nation's newest military officers. Would our future officers stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. Have been appointed an officer in the United States military. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States 
against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations to these new fearless and tough lieutenants and ensigns in the Army, Air Force, Space Force, Navy, and United States Marine Corps. Please welcome to the stage President Pines and Senior Vice President and Provost Jennifer King Rice. Graduating seniors, we have now reached the moment you have all been waiting for, when you are officially authorized to receive your degrees. I now call on Provost Rice to present the candidates for the degrees. Mr. President, in accordance with the recommendation of the faculties of the schools and colleges, and in recognition of the successful completion of all degree requirements, I request that you confer upon these candidates the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music Education, Bachelor of Science, Master of Applied Anthropology, Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Chemical and Life Sciences, Master of Community Planning, Master of Education, Master of Engineering, Master of Extension Education, Master of Finance, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Historic Preservation, Master of Information Management, Master of Journalism, Master of Landscape Architecture, Master of Library and Information Science, Master of Music, Master of Professional Studies, Master of Public Health, Master of Public Management, Master of Public Policy, Master of Quantitative Finance, Master of Real Estate Development, Master of Science, Doctor of Audiology, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy, as appropriate in each case. Under the authority granted by the State of Maryland to the Board of Regents, of the University System of Maryland and by the authority of the board has delegated to me, I am delighted to confer upon you, the candidates, the, degree, the degrees as appropriate in each case. Congratulations! Terps, are you tough? Terps, are you tough? All right. Today represents a tremendous moment in each of your lives, the culmination of so much hard work. After living through some of the most tumultuous times in our nation's recent history, it is a true mark of your devotion to excellence and the transformative power of higher education that you, that you have earned your degrees. So I ask you all to stop and pause 
for just a second. Look at your fellow graduates. Now, look at your fellow graduates. And then close your eyes. Close your eyes. Breathe in deeply. I want you to capture this moment in time forever. Today is the conclusion of one chapter of your lives, but another begins when you leave this stadium. We know that it's in our duty as Terps to be fearless and to take on the grand challenges of our time. We must guard against future pandemics. We must put a stop to gun violence. We must end racial and social inequality. We must protect our democracy. And Terps, we all must be tough. Each of these problems should be seen as an opportunity, and an opportunity to take what you have learned at the University of Maryland and make a better future for all. And as you focus on these tasks, I ask that you all also never forget our commitment to serving the public good. To paraphrase the author and professor, Dr. Robert Coles, we must always live our lives striving uphill in the face of discouragements and challenges. But it is crucial to do so while also reducing the pain and suffering of those around us and making a better world for everyone. Looking at you today, I know you all are up to that job. For your experience here at the University of Maryland has changed you. It has made you stronger. It has made you wiser. It has made you tougher. And it has shown you how to be fearless. So now, all of you can move fearlessly forward. Congratulations to the members of the University of Maryland summer and fall 2023 and spring 2024 graduates. Good luck and go Terps! Students, families, faculty, staff, Everyone, alumni, and Terps, please welcome to CQ Stadium, the best mascot in the country, Testudo! gets his cap on. I think everyone's standing. If you're not yet, everyone please rise. It is my great pleasure to invite the class of 2023 and the class of 2024 to officially turn your tassel. <laughs> <laughs> 